Okay, just a, a little uh, uh, video there, just that, that, that describes the Sun Systems. Um, you know, this is an important product for, for M4, and clearly today we wanted to talk about some of the things with Sun Systems, and obviously with professional advantage and the very close relationship that we, we have together uh, as a group. Um, uh, along with Andrew's theme about, you know, trademarks and, and, and bond, etc., uh, I will throw up a full disclaimer. Um, which essentially says, I'm going to tell you lots of things today, uh, some of which, which we may do, um, but we reserve the right, obviously, not to do that. Um, so there's obviously some very forward-looking things that we're going to talk about today, so just throwing that out there so you're fully aware. Um, what I didn't want to do today was come and talk heavily about M4. You know who we are, um, and so not really talk about us as an organisation. But essentially, some of the things we are doing, and as again, if you've been to any of my presentations previously, we've talked very heavily around M410X and some of the things that we're doing. Um, but really, as a strategy, you know, we're looking at the architecture of the internet. Um, you know, interestingly, you know, we're talking about Wi-Fi and connecting to things. You know, you know, we're always in touch. We're always, you know, looking for information, uh, keeping in touch with our organisations. So that's absolutely critical to some of the things that we're doing. And, and again, talking about architecture of the internet, one of the things we're doing specifically for Sun Systems and iPods is, is trying to open up Sun Systems to the internet a bit more, and I'll, I'll come on to that. Obviously, you know, we, you know, we work with micro verticals, you know, in a lot of M4 products. Um, Sun Systems and iPods particularly works across a broad horizontal range of, of verticals, which is important for us as a financials application. And beauty, um, you know, it's really important for us to change the paradigm of how you interact with software. So we've done a lot of work around our, our user interface. And again, I'll show you some of the things that we're doing in Sun Systems that are very new around that. And again, just really on this slide, just a sense of what Infor is doing as an organisation in terms of the number of new products that we're bringing to market, the number of new integrations, obviously iPods with an integration with Sun Systems, and the number of new features. Uh, what's really important for us is really sort of enriching your experience with Sun Systems and what we can put into the product to help you. So why M4? Really, you know, we want to you know, make things easy for you. Multiple deployment options, you know, a complete business suite. We want you to have mobile access. We want you to be collaborative. And again, one of the things I'll talk to you about today is some of the collaboration options that we have um, and really how you can extend uh, uh, some systems into other parts of the business as well as iPods. So just specifically, um, first of all, around Sun Systems, um, just really as an, an update, just a couple of new things here. Um, we are a global product, you know, we reach across the globe and, um, you know, Andrew, you know, spoke about iPods and, and the reach that has. Um, and that's hugely important for us as a product. 9,000 customers, we're in 182 countries, you know, we've got a big footprint and PA particularly as a partnership for us is absolutely crucial to that success, um, which is why you're all here today with, with applications such as iPods. Um, we have that industry experience. Sun Systems has been around for 30 years. And again, today, hopefully, you'll see some of the ways in which we're pushing the product forward. And you've enjoyed functional richness. And again, we've spoken about M410X, web, mobile, collaboration, and what that means to you. A couple of new things, um, one in particular. Um, I'm not sure whether any of you are familiar with the uh, Technology Evaluation Center. Uh, so this is a, a resource, an organisation who look at all of the ERP and financial applications on the market um, and they do a, do a rating. And so we've just gone through that process. It was a very, very heavy process um, working with these guys. Lots of product demonstrations, um, you know, 6,000 question surveys around Sun Systems. Um, but I'm pleased to note that we've now formally been um, certified by the Tech Eval Centre. So, you know, go on to, to, to the internet, look them up, um, and that gives you a very thorough review of Sun Systems and how the product, you know, stands in the market against our competitors uh, and what it provides organisation organisations. And obviously, you know, just on the, on the right, as you look at it, the FD's Excellence Awards, um, you know, Sun Systems is still relevant, still a very important product for, for Info, and that's been recognised. And so, you know, again, moving into where you are today with your organisations um, and some of the business challenges that you face. 
Um, this is an interesting slide. I always throw this one up and some of the things perhaps you're thinking about, um, particularly things like performance as, as, as organisations. You know, where can you improve? Um, you know, things like data to actionable insight. Andrew's got a, a, an interesting session a little bit later about um, iPods and BI cubes. Really looking at the information, you know, on your spend control, etc., and how you can turn that into action. Obviously, iPods will, you know, bring costs down for processing um, your your um, your procurement process. But what do you do with that information? How do you make that work for you? Um, and again, what we're trying to do from some systems point of view is really change the way from just a pure processing system um, to where you get information that's useful and and where you go with that. And, you know, and looking at things like technology, cloud and mobility, you know, where can these things help you? And it's trying to bring that into a wider picture of some systems as to how we can help you moving forward with some of the technology updates that we've made. Because the world is changing, um, how your systems keep up, um, you know, mobile and social, you know, we're all connected. Um, we want things to be intuitive and intelligent. We don't need to be going chasing information or digging it. Um, and obviously, cloud architecture, that's really important. That's coming. The cloud is here and it's here now. So if you look in the 2000s, you know, web, you know, the millennial age, you know, people getting to grips with this sort of technology, and also the cloud itself. And then moving into 2015, this interesting concept of the Internet of Things, you know, everything available to us, you know, much of that in the cloud, you know, computing everywhere. And importantly, advanced, pervasive, uh, invisible analytics. How can I get that information? I don't want to ask for it. I want it to come to me. So really, you know, Sun Systems is pushing forward along with IPOS to try and give you that best experience because the world is changing. Technology is moving at a pace that we need to keep up with. And an interesting statistic, um, because one of the things today, you know, I'd really like to get across is, is that we're up to version Sun System 6.2, which is our, our latest release of the software. And 58% of all best-in-class organisations run on the very latest version of their ERP or financial software. Um, you know, we've got a big customer base. We, we run multiple versions. Many of you um, will be on different versions. Some of you may even be on Sun Systems version 4. So our urge is to look at what we're showing you, what you can do with the system, and just bear that in mind, that statistic about who runs the latest versions of their ERP software. Because traditionally, you know, some of the, 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 the ERP financial software has been expensive, inadequate. What we want to try and do, particularly from a Sun Systems point of view, is make it modern, complete, global, and high value. And again, a couple of things that I will talk about today, a little bit later on in the presentation, are ways in which we can provide you value, particularly around the investment that you've made in your software. Because Sun Systems, you know, is a rich solution. Um, there's a lot there. And in other presentations that you may have seen, you know, we've talked heavily about our modern user experience and what that means, and some of the things that you can, you know, take within that Sun System solution, including applications such as iPods. A couple of little things today that um, I wanted to talk about. I've got a session this afternoon on document management and automation. That's coming into Sun Systems, the ability to hold documents against Sun Systems records. And one of the major themes today I wanted to talk about with the interaction with iPods is something brand new that we're about to launch within the next month or so, customer and supplier employee portals, web-based access to some systems, and this can be to other organisations. This isn't just internally facing um, uh, use of portals, it's externally facing for your customers, for your suppliers, indeed anybody who you want to have accessing some sort of Sun Systems data. And just on how we bring that all to you, there is a technology layer um, and I'm probably going to talk about this now in actual fact because it is important because this really underpins everything that we do at, at Infor um, and some of the messages that we've been trying to get to out to you as users. Uh, we have a technology footprint. We've got things like Infor Ion, which is our integration platform. And as I say, we've got things like document management that we're now looking to, to bring to you all. 
One of the big changes, and again, this is a brand new announcement. Um, this is the first anybody outside of, of R&D in, in Farnborough has, has heard this. What we're looking to do uh, for you all as customers is provide that technology layer to you within the fabric of Sun Systems. So deliver that to you at no extra cost. Um, so you will have access to ION, you'll have access to our document management suite in the fabric of Sun Systems. And why that's really crucially important for us is for things like workflows, alerts, notifications, etc. Because that just should be part of the Sun Systems experience and that's what we're going to deliver. So that's a pretty major announcement for us um, to, to deliver that to you um, as users of Sun Systems. Because what it's going to do, it's going to lift your experience of using the software. You can move into areas such as document management and we will provide that to you as part of your core Sun Systems experience. So there'll be much more information coming out on that shortly, um, but it's really important. Particularly if you come along to my document management session this afternoon, uh, because that will open up that door to you, should you decide to take it. And of course, all of this is down to you as organisations as to whether you want to take, you know, those new pieces of the software. And of course, you know, importantly, as you all know, I'm not going to preach to you all about what Sun Systems brings, but, you know, we, we deliver global essentials in terms of the core software itself. And I'm going to talk about some of the things we're bringing into the software as well. Um, but that will also you know, build into the fact that we're now going to give you this technology platform um, just as part of the Sun Systems experience. Very important for us moving forward. So what's new and what's coming next? So what have we got coming? Um, so just as a brief pricey of what's happening 2015, 2016, uh, we'll have a Sun System 622 release, which is coming in November 2015. So this isn't a full point release. It will be a, a smaller release, but what we're going to do is package some new things in there. And that will include the Sun Systems web portals release. Um, that's also going to contain some additional IDM integration. And hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have some more information around that technology layer that we're going to deliver to all of you. Any of you on Sun Systems 4? Um, you know, good news. There's going to be a Sun Systems 442 release. 30th of November, it's um, scheduled to go out of the door. So that's our first significant release of the software um, in about two years. So there's going to be a number of uh, customer requested updates and enhancements. The look and feel is going to change slightly um, to, to make it a, a bit more Sun Systems-esque. Um, you know. And hopefully that's going to bridge the gap for those of you considering an upgrade to Sun System 6 in terms of getting used to the user experience. And then our major release that's coming is Sun System 6.3, and that's coming in June 2016. And a, just a little small line there, um, which is going to be interesting for today. Uh, obviously, as you're all iPods users, um, we will be delivering a new Sun System centric lightweight P2P. Uh, we've been asked to do it for years and years, and we're finally going to do that. But what I would say is, is that Infor's absolute intention, and from a Sun Systems perspective, is to offer iPods and continue to offer that to our customers. What we're not going to do is build something as complete as iPods. It will be a light touch. So for any organisations who require P2P, there's going to be a new module within Sun Systems which will enable you to do that. Um, we have our own P2P solutions today within Infor for Sun Systems, and we're going to remove those. So there would be a straight choice. iPods, if you want that great full featured functionality, but there will be some functionality within core Sun systems that you can use to facilitate P2P. And there's another, a whole bunch of other things that, that I'll talk about um, for Sun System 6.3 shortly. In terms of V4, again, for any of you who use version 4, it's a really important product for us. Six and a half thousand customers still using it, 60% of all of our customers, in fact. So we're committed to continuing supporting the product and we will, um, you know, for absolutely the foreseeable future. Um, along with my slide earlier about the 58%, you know, we'd really like you to consider any of you using the software to upgrade and take advantage of all of the new things that we're doing. And obviously thinking about Sun Systems in the cloud, perhaps, as an option. 
We've also got a new release of Q&A, Q&A Evolve. I'm not going to talk about that today, clearly. Um, but that's also available to you as users of version 4. So the, the, you know, the message there is great product. We'll continue to support it. We'll continue to maintain it. And we have a new release coming. So just, just to flesh out sort of roadmap and some of the things that we're doing and understand where we are, and before I get on to sort of some of the, the, the nice things that we're doing, we reached out to all of you about 18, 24 months ago about what you liked best about Sun Systems. Um, and the results came back, and you all liked the unified ledger, multi-currency, real-time reporting via Q&A, analysis capabilities, and open period accounting. One of the absolute challenges that I have as, as a, you know, the director for product management for, for Sun Systems is what do we do next? How do we make the system better? Um, so some of the things that we have done is in 6.3, for instance, we've extended our multi-currency footprint with currency rate types. Analysis capabilities have been extended. We've got the extended analysis module in Sun Systems 6.2, which was the first new module that we've introduced for a number of years which now, uh, for any of those of you on Sun System 6, is free. That module is free, so you can take that now, which builds on our analysis capabilities. And in 621, we de uh, developed and introduced uh, financial calendars. So we now have a calendar concept within Sun Systems as well as open period accounting. So when we decide what to do next, you know, those core features we did very well, we built on them. But where do we go? So just briefly on Sun Systems 442, we're going to continue the UI changes uh, that we're going to deliver um, align with Sun System 6. There's going to be a whole heap of code fixes and updates. But there's also some new features in there. Um, as you'll see, I'm not going to run through every single uh, feature, and the slides will be available um, via Nikki and the team. But lots going in there. And importantly, things like platform support updates. Obviously, Windows 10 is now here and available, and so we'll be supporting that in the new release of Sun Systems 442. So there is a timeline there uh, for what we're delivering for Sun Systems 4, some of the things that we're at. And again, we've just accelerated the release to November um, because we were anxious to get something out there. In terms of the Sun Systems roadmap, the fuller roadmap, as I've said, you know, we have a 621 release where we delivered uh, financial calendars. 622 will be coming with um, uh, some additional document management capabilities. And this new feature here, customer and supplier portals, um, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit more detail because that has direct relevance to what we're trying to achieve today as users of iPods. But Sun System 6.3 will be our major release. Um, as I've said, there's going to be a, a new requisitioning piece that's called to Sun Systems, a new module. We'll be delivering that. We're making some changes to static data, uh, onboarding updates. Uh, we've got something called Sun Systems Home Pages, um, which I'm going to show you in a moment, which is quite interesting. We're looking at a new intercompany posting function, currency rate types, and ledger import performance enhancements, which again I'll mention shortly. So lots going on. So I just wanted to give you all the sense today of how much is going into the product and how we're going to push forward moving into the future. And really, you know, as users of iPods and users of Sun Systems, it's a call to arms as to what we do next. Sun Systems 6.3 plus. What would you like us to see uh, in, uh, do? What would you like us to put into the, to the product? We've kind of got a bit of a blank canvas, so if anybody's got anything particularly that you'd like to see us do or put into the product or you feel we have a gap, then come and speak to me today. Happy to take on board any comments that you have. It's crucially important to, uh, to us and for you as users to be able to input on what we do with the product for iPods and for Sun Systems. So anything that's relevant, please let me know because we're always happy to hear from you. Again, I'm not going to talk about Q&A particularly, um, but again, it's an integral part of the solution set and we report over iPods, for instance, with Q&A. So again, a full roadmap of what we're delivering. Many of you will know we've got a new release of Q&A called Evolve. This is our 64-bit capable um, uh, version of, of Q&A. And again, there's lots of development work going into that, um, you know, just to make the product a little bit more contemporary and bring it up to date. And also, you know, do some web enablement of the product. That was really important for us. So watch out for that too. 
And finally, um, you know, just on this section, uh, just talking a little bit about cloud. Um, cloud is, is amongst us. Some of you may be considering it. One of the really exciting things that we've done just recently, um, just in the last two or three months, uh, we, we uh, worked on a big deal uh, with Travel Lodge Hotel Group. In actual fact, everyone will be familiar with Travel Lodge. Their adverts seem to be on the telly um, every minute. Um, but we signed a deal with them for Sun Systems in the cloud, and a major component of that was iPods. Um, so we worked very closely with PA um, uh, to work with Travel Lodge to deliver them a cloud solution. Um, and it's really exciting. It includes B for B6, um, you know, so really something you need to think about, you know, um, and it's something we're very much we're working towards. And as I say, Travel Lodger is a terrific example of a new business um, that wanted Sun Systems, loved the functionality, but wanted to own the software in a different way and deploy it in a different way. And as I say, iPods is an absolute integral part of that as the, as the solution that we're delivering to them. And just on Sun Systems itself and, you know, upgrade options and talking about the product, you know, I have had some people say to me, oh, I haven't heard much about Sun Systems. What's happening? What are we doing with the product? Um, we do have a new page on our website. Um, there's lots of great information there. Um, there's a nice picture of Charles Phillips um, uh, as CEO, airbrushed, soft mood lighting. And there's a rather awful picture of me which was, a, which was a rough morning for me in my office with a selfie. Um, so apologies for that. So I wouldn't open the page up early in the morning. Um, it's not a pleasant sight. But it does contain a huge amount of information. Um, it, it contains our roadmap information, our release information. And as I say, there's an open letter from Charles Phillips to you all as customers to say, you know, uh, Sun Systems and associated products are absolutely critical to M4 and we're continuing investing um, and continuing moving the product forward. There's obviously some other information about, you know, top reasons to upgrade, etc. So if you haven't been on the page, I'd urge you to go and have a look. It is great. Um, lots of useful information. Um, so please take a look at that um, when you get a moment. Um, so I've in included the URL, URL in, in the deck, um, so that's our Sun Systems customer page for everybody. So that includes some great links out to Professional Advantage and some of the things that they do with iPods, obviously, and B4B, etc. So again, a wealth of information. Um, not a lot of people know that it's there, so I'd urge you to take a look. So, some new things. Um, so some new things that you wouldn't have seen, you wouldn't have um, heard about, perhaps, um, and this is, in actual fact, um, I do feel a bit James Bondish. I'm looking for the ejector button just in case some of this doesn't work. Um, but I want to talk about some of the new things that we are doing, and particularly Sun Systems web portals, um, because this is a real departure for us, something we've never done before. And talk about some of the other items that are coming in Sun Systems 6.3, just to give you a sense again of, 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 what, of what we're doing. And I don't want to... Um, dwell too much on, on, on the text here. This is just really our, our vision statement. Um, but one of the big things that we've done in, in 6.3 is, is, is improve ledger import performance. Um, it's crucially important for us because a lot of you bring in lots of data and transactions into Sun Systems um, and speed is of the essence. And as you can see from some of the metrics here, we've actually gone away and made it approximately three times faster at least uh, at last count. So if we take almost a sort of quarter of a million line import um, there, you know, which includes full analysis, what used to take, you know, 90 odd minutes will now take 30 minutes. So Sun Systems Core, very important to us, and we're making as, uh, uh, as many changes as we can. The reason why we've made it quicker is we do a lot of caching now. So there's going to be a new feature in Sun System 6.3 where you could set caches. So if you're bringing in transactions, it will be so much quicker. Um, so whether you're bringing in two lines from somewhere or a million lines via transfer desk, you'll see the um, performance improvements instantly. And obviously when we scale out um, for concurrent importing, you'll see that exponentially grow for performance enhancements. 
And this is just a new screen of, of where we set this cache in Sun System 6.3. So again, brand new. Nobody's ever seen this before. It's, it's fresh out of R&D. Um, you know, we're really excited about this one because it's kind of under the covers and really improves the import performance of Sun Systems. Another thing I wanted to talk about Again, if I go back to some of the presentations that I've done previously, um, we've gone very heavy on this concept of Info10x, the user experience, how you work with Sun Systems, the beauty is a competence type thing. And a lot of that was driven by our Info Mingle strategy, um, and again, by things like Info Ion. And that's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to do that. Um, so what we decided to do was create something brand new for Sun Systems 6.3 um, called Sun Systems Home Pages to really just elevate the way that you interact and work with the software. Because frankly, you know, if you go into Core Sun Systems, it can be a bit flat. So what we've done is we've changed the look and feel. Um, we've replaced favourites and shortcuts to reports with these things that we call widgets. Um, and so what we do is we use APIs to query Sun Systems data, and this can all be personalised by user. Um, so what you can do is you can bring up um, a calendar countdown for period end, year end, whatever it might be. Look at account balance comparisons, account credit limits, again, which is important, touching through to iPods, etc. Um, very configurable. And the really neat thing is, without anything else, um, with just core Sun Systems, we have a drill back capability. So if you've got one of these widgets on your home page uh, and it has a business object displayed, you can click on it and it'll take you through to the Sun Systems record directly. Um, it's all been designed by Hook and Loop, um, who do all of our, uh, our user interfaces. So what you can do is period end, account balance comparisons, account credit limits, the recent activity that you've had, which is really quite clever. Uh, so what you can do is have a list of things that you do most frequently and Sun Systems will present that to you. So instead of you having to go off and search for things, you can just click on that recent activity and it'll take you through to what you've been doing previously. Functions, reports, URLs and pins. So quite a different paradigm. So again, I'm not sure whether you can see this very well, because obviously it's the grey, it's a, a, a stylized look and feel, which is a bit flat. But this is what you would have previously seen in Sun Systems and you access uh, info, information. And this is what you'll see now. Um, so again, very, very different paradigm. So these are these widgets, um, a graphical representation of how you work with the software. And these, as I say, all user definable, all user configurable. You can decide what you want on here, and as I say, because these are business object, these are business objects that we deliver. You can click on these, and it will drill you through to the record in Sun Systems. And again, the important thing is there's no technology piece driving this. You can choose when you upgrade or you, you move to Sun Systems 6.3 to have this as your home page. So it's an either or. You can have the traditional Sun Systems, or you can have these widgets and see things in a different way. So move them around, include whichever ones you want. Um, and th there's no cost to this. This will just be a choice. If you, if you move to Sun System 6.3, you can decide to use the home pages. If you did want to use our Mingle uh, user interface, which is the much fuller way that we collaborate, you can also use these as well. So, any way that we deliver the software, you can access these. Um, I did. Very quickly. Thinking of time. It's just a little video uh, that I prepared just to show you how easy it is to, to work with these things. Um, so looking at a, a report here, for instance. Looking at period end, all configurable, part of the software. So what this is going to do, it's going to give me a countdown. I could be a financial controller. I want to, to understand when my, my period end is coming. I want the system to alert me within seven days, for instance, as to um, when I need to action something. So I'm going to get an alert here uh, to tell me that that's happening. So again, fully configurable by you. Uh, here we're looking at account credit limits, for instance. Another uh, widget that we're setting up. 
if I click on the expand again, business unit, the account, the threshold, so I want to see within 50%, and I can start building up a picture of how I work. And as I say, um, no IT uh, input required. Any of you would be able to go into Sun Systems and create these very quickly and easily. So again, the system will have a concept of alerting you as well. Um, if something um, is outside of uh, your, your metrics. So just set up a couple more. Again, just to show you the complete picture of how we set these things up. And here we've got an account balance comparative. Um, popping that on the screen again. And as I say, you can choose to have the normal Sun Systems interface or you can choose to have this. It's completely up to you. And again, you know, there's no additional um, technology footprint. There's nothing additional you will need to install. This will just be part of Sun Systems inherently to the user interface. So a very, very different way of, uh, of looking at the software and interacting with the software. So we're quite excited about that one um, that we're going to bring you. So what I want to really finish up on is there's lots to get through. Um, it's funny, I was joking with Andrew this morning. I could probably stand here all day and talk about lots of different things, but it's clearly you know, lots to get through today and lots of great things to talk about iPods. But this is really the one where we see some great interaction with, with iPods. And this is something very, very new to us. So what we're delivering now is something called Sun Systems Customer Supplier and Finance Portals which will be made generally available in November, which is part of this 622 release that we're, we're delivering. So what are they? So Sun Systems portals will be a web-based portal, so web-based access only, to provide secure access to customers, suppliers, or other defined users that you might have in your organisation who require access to information. The initial delivery of this will be uh, available in Sun System 6.2. Um, we are thinking about how we expand that out into to other versions. And the great thing about it is, is what it does is it exposes relevant Sun Systems information um, to a defined user, and they don't have to be a Sun Systems user. And what we can do is expose pretty much anything, so from journal information, customer supplier records, invoices, purchase sales orders, okay? The idea being is that as an internal administrator, because clearly this is a web access, so we want it to be secure and safe, you know, you'll be getting people accessing information that could be sensitive. What we'd be doing at the same time, you know, from, from a you know, Pure Sun Systems perspective is releasing this with our order fulfillment implementation wizards, because you, know, you, you, you might have a fuller experience needed in purchasing and sales, um, which will really lift out the portal capabilities. But what might be really important for you is to expose this information working with iPods, and we're working with Deanne, Nikki, and the PA team, really looking at how we bring this out together with iPods. So out of the box, essentially, uh, we'll be delivering two things, a customer portal and a supplier portal. Um, so within the customer portal, you can view orders, invoices, line details, payment details. What you can also do is review and retrieve invoices from the report store. You can view, print and save them. Um, interestingly, um, I was working over in Sydney for a time and uh, we had a customer who worked in the travel space. They had lots of invoices that they had and they had a person in their office who actually, their job was to pick up the phone from suppliers, etc., who wanted copies of invoices and that's all they did. And they said, James, what we really want is somewhere where somebody can be self-service, they can go in and get that information themselves. And this is exactly what the customer and supplier portal will do for us. The great thing about it is, is that it's a compute, completely user-definable framework, and it's based on views. I'm not going to get technical, I'm not technical, but it's a view of your data, and it can lift any information out of Sun Systems that you like, or any application. What it will all do in the background is leverage SSC, which is one of our uh, uh, components to bring data in and out of Sun Systems behind the covers. So what we've done um, in the past, again, you may have 
sin with things like Mingle. There was a requirement for SharePoint. Um, the portals don't require anything um, in terms of it's a self-sufficient framework. There's no reliance on any other technology. It's all um, you know, proprietary to info. And so that framework allows for extensions. So we're going to incorporate that integration with IPOS. Um, so um, delivering any information within a portal that you want as an IPOS user. And it will facilitate push and pull. So we can pull information out, but we can also send information back. And the beauty of that means is that you know, people could theoretically enter their own orders. They can update their own information within Sun Systems in a safe environment. So it is fully secure. There's no underlying access to Sun Systems at all. So you know, we're exposing it via a web portal. Um, but they're not actually accessing Sun Systems. So importantly, anybody you, you have accessing the customer or the supplier portal doesn't need to be a Sun Systems user. So there doesn't need to be a Sun Systems license there in place, which is, which is you know, really great. Because if you can think about the application of that to any casual user of, of that information, that's, that's great. So all that will happen is as a user is provided with the URL, and an administrator grants access to the relevant objects that they need access to. So from an IPOS point of view, why is that important to us? Well, you know, one of the things that IPOS delivers obviously is, is you know, cost reduction for that, you know, how much it costs you to process, you know, orders, invoices through the system. So eliminate invo invoice processing transaction costs. Additional cost benefits in there as well, obviously, because we're opening up information to suppliers. Hugely important. We don't have to do that work. And obviously, it's a shared source of data. And it gives the opportunity to make suppliers or customers proactive you know, in the delivery of, of, of the service. We can also use it as a communication tool, absolutely. Well, you know, any interaction that you might have with the supplier or customer can be facilitated through this uh, framework as well as a data entry tool. Imagine, you know, customer updates, supplier updates. You won't have to do that. You can put that responsibility back to the supplier. And one of my earlier slides, I mentioned this internet of things, and, you know, you might have your own uh, you know, opinion and idea of what that means. But what we're really saying here for us is that we're just trying to shift the way in which we work. Um, so this is a web portal. This isn't access to Sun Systems. This is really changing the paradigm of how we interact. You know, looking to drive down your costs even further. And really what you want to be doing is dealing with things by exception. You know, it's only if there's something that, you, you know, needs your direct action. Everything else should just happen. And this is what this is going to provide you all. So that shared source of data for the organisation and the supplier. The supplier could update their address, payment details, all based on secure access. So underlying that, all of the standard Sun system security, if you will, will be in place. You know, things like early payment discounts will be better facilitated. Um, we can easily expose goods receipt information to resolve delivery issues, all in that one portal. And also, you know, if I can drive home another point is, is that the portal is not restricted to, to suppliers and customers. It's absolutely possible to extend the portal to anybody. You know, if you've got casual users in the organisation who perhaps phone up finance and ask a question, or oh, could you tell me the balance on this account? Could you give me a copy of this invoice? Well, if you've got sales staff, warehouse staff, whatever, you can set them up as a portal user, they can go in and they can be self-service. So it's absolutely extending that Sun Systems footprint without additional users. So again, you know, a really nice feature to have. Oh, I'm nearly time. Sorry, a hurry. So that's a conceptual view of what we're doing, customer, supplier and finance. Um, what I'll do is I'll skip through these click-throughs and I'll finish up hopefully showing a little demonstration. So this is the portal. This is completely user definable. It's a framework, so this can be your own um, uh, logos, etc. So we've got a user logging in, secure access, username, password, etc. 
And then what they're seeing, again, bear in mind, this is just our internal um, mock-up, if you will, uh, that we have. But you'll see the objects that are available to the user, orders, invoices, returns, account balances, full search facilities. So if I'm looking at an order, I can look at LinkedIn voices, for instance, and I can look at details. It's going to give me line details, whether that's been dispatched, etc. And you'll see some action buttons on the right hand side of the screen. So what would happen for a customer or supplier, you can restrict what they can look at clearly. You don't want them looking at other um, you know, suppliers' information. And they're absolutely fully capable to just drill through and have a look at you know, what's been paid, what's outstanding, um, any information that is relevant to them with regards to an invoice or an order. And all of it is linked and all of it is delivered. So this particular scenario will come out of the box. Um, but again, we can extend it to any Sun Systems object that we want. And the really nice feature is, this isn't a Sun Systems user, this is a casual user from a su supplier. They can get a copy of their own invoice. They can save it, they can print it, and completely self-service, no interaction from us. And again, bear in mind, it's just a portal address on the internet. They're not touching Sun Systems at all whatsoever at this point. <coughs> So a number of things that they can do. And again, bear in mind, this short demo doesn't include things like updating supplier details. Again, it would be your choice to decide how far you extend the solution to any of your customers and suppliers. It's a very simple install. One installer will set the web page up, and then there's huge amounts of configuration. You can even change the text that people see. You can make it more relevant to your suppliers, your customers. There's language strings as well that you can use and you can update. So, really nice feature, very rich, very functional. Do you have any ideas on implementation, James? Implementation is a great question. Um, I'll take that in a sec, I'll just let this run out. So, there's also an account balances section, so you can see credit limits, your age balances, overdue invoices. And obviously there's a user profile here as well. There is an administrative function which looks after the whole piece, um, you know, by company, by supplier, etc. And you can set the confines, but obviously you'll have your own uh, profile where you can change, you know, um, your, your, your password and some of your standard details. So, um, quick run through. Nikki's question. <laughs> So the portal itself it will come within an, uh, an installer, a simple installer, so it will install the framework. And what will come out of the box from us is customers, suppliers. So implementation-wise, it's not a heavy lift. A lot of it will be configuration, but there's also the element of you might actually want to extend into other areas, which is why we think this will be useful for customers, because you can actually decide what you want to expose, what you want people to have access to. And again, because it isn't Sun Systems per se, you don't require a Sun Systems user account. Okay, so you can set up, I guess we need to be careful about how many you say you can, but um, you could set up you know, infinite numbers of users depending on their role. And again, so the, the, the um, implementation effort really would be defined by your imagination in terms of what you wanted to deliver day one. But obviously, obviously from our perspective, we've kind of built out so it's scalable. It's absolutely scalable, absolutely. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So, and again, the idea being is if you're a multi-entity, for instance, and you had, you know, uh, uh, offices in different regions and things, then you'd only need one portal framework because it could service all of that. Because what it does is it just takes a view of whatever business unit that you're allocated to. So, you know, a single instance. No, I haven't. Would anybody like to ask some questions? I, I know it's um, quite a lot to, lot to get through. Could you, could you evolve 1 .3 yeah, Evolve 1.3, good question. That's coming November. Um, so Q&A, as we know it, or vision, as we all know and, and, and love to call it, um, 
It's changed. It's changed dramatically. Um, and it's fair to say the new release didn't have some functionality in it, which I think is why Philip's asked the question. So 1.3 um, is coming November in the BI 11 release, because we're just putting all of our BI tools in one release now. Um, and that's going to include things like hierarchies, etc. And that's all there. So fully expecting that to be um, yeah, November, so not far away. Sorry, sorry. No, no. So, so, so the the some business or order fulfilment, as as it's called in five and six, will remain. What we're doing is just building a, a discrete um, P2P module on the top. Um, just on the question about Ion and Mingle, I haven't obviously spoken about it or demonstrated it again today. But yes, that's the absolute intention. So, we will deliver to every single customer and you can choose to take it if you if you want to but you'll get mingle you'll get ion um, and you'll also get and if you come and have a look this afternoon and you'll see it is document management okay and the reason why we're doing that is is that you know I've stood here many times and tried to extol the virtue of, of ion and mingle and things but you know, it wasn't for everyone, it came at a cost, but it's absolutely in the fabric of everything that we're doing with Sun Systems. So if you wanted to do workflow and alerting, you would need that. So it's now a given, so you could take full advantage of it if you want to. Uh, if you uh, put this eye on the widgets uh, going to the sea, and then will it serve also all iPhone data? Yeah, so, so one of the things, and as I say, this is, this is absolutely hot off the press um, we'll probably be making some bigger announcements at the Infor events but the idea being is, is is that what we will do to make it available to everyone is, is to have it as a restricted use if you will so that will be for uh, you know for what we deem as an Infor application which IPOS would be would, would fall you know, form part of that. If you wanted, for instance, if you, I don't know, had another line of business application or SAP or whatever, then, you know, that that's a slightly different paradigm. But what we want to be able to do is make sure that you can use some systems, iPods, etc., to its fullest capabilities. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I was hoping to do for today, and it's just a time thing with R&D, is in actual fact, yes, because what we're doing is we're working with PA to, to look at those views for specific IPOS data. So you'll be able to do that exact same thing. So a supplier could come in, see that IPOS data in a restricted manner, but in a secure web portal. So it's bringing all of those pieces together. That's absolutely what we're doing. Yeah, that's, that's another terrific question. Um, when we docu I'm doing document management this afternoon, but that's a really, really terrific question because going back to you know, Philip's point about why are we doing this, well, that, that's absolutely why we're doing this because IDM will feed the portal. Um, and I won't talk about IDM too heavily now, but the really nice thing about our document ma management capability is it's all contextual. So what that means is, is if you've got a unique supplier reference, an invoice number or whatever, that follows that invoice wherever you're working in the system, and that could be the portal. So where, where effectively some system sees that reference, you can pull it up from anywhere, so including the portal. So you could bring that invoice through, document management repository, print it out, save it, whatever you want to do.